Okay, let's move on to the ellipse. Let's look at a definition first. An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points, which are known as the foci, is constant. So here's the deal. We've spoken about this plane before. Imagine a sheet of paper, right? That's a plane, just extended out in all four directions. It's like a thin layer of the atmosphere. And we've spoken about fixed points before. One fixed point is known as the focus. Well, now I've got two fixed points. And I'll call it F sub 1 and F sub 2 for focus number 1 and focus number 2. The plural of focus is foci. Now, it's, it has an interesting phrase here that some of you may or may not understand. It says the sum of whose distances from these points is constant. So here's what it means. If I take a point here on the ellipse and the distance from focus number one and focus number two, if I take these two distances and add them together, it would be the same as if I took a point over here and took the distance from focus number one and focus number two. If I took these two distances and added them together, it would be the exact same value as if I added this, the, these two distances together. That's how they get an ellipse, is by taking two fixed points and looking at the distance from each of those fixed points and adding them together, that value is exactly the same as if I chose another point and added these two together. Don't go by looks. Are you with me? Because looks can be deceiving. So go by the definition itself. Cool? By the way, I also call an ellipse a smushed circle. So if I take a circle and smush it this way, it would be longer in the y direction, wouldn't it? If I took a circle and smushed it this way, it would be longer in the x direction, wouldn't it? Okay, so hang in there. We've got a couple of uh, formulas that go along with a vertical ellipse or a horizontal ellipse. Okay, so we spoke about ellipses being in the horizontal and the vertical direction, and we were going to talk about some formulas. So let's look over here first on the left side of the board, and it says the major axis for the ellipse is horizontal. Well, horizontal is which direction? Yes, horizontal is the x direction. That's what this means. So we have to keep in mind that horizontal is the x direction. So let's look at the formula. Remember I mentioned an ellipse is basically a smushed circle. So do you notice we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, the quantities of those? Isn't that how a circle started? And a circle equaled the radius squared, didn't it? Well, here's the deal. With an ellipse, since it's a smushed circle, my radius all the way around is not the same, is it? The radius in the x direction would be the same, and the radius in the y direction would be the same, but it wouldn't be the same throughout the entire ellipse. So, this a squared and b squared under here represents our radii in the x direction and the y direction. And notice it's equal to 1. An ellipse is always equal to 1, so remember that, always equal to 1. So, I want to talk about those radii first. A squared is under the quantity of x minus h squared, correct? Just like in the circle, it wasn't r squared that was the radius. I had to take the square root of it, didn't I? Well, same thing here. If I take the square root of a squared, what do I get? Good, you get just a, which means the radius in the x direction would be just a. And what about the y direction? Correct, it would be just b. Now, since the major axis is horizontal, that's the x direction, which means the radius in the x direction is longer than the radius in the y direction. So we need to keep that in mind. Good? Okay. Now, just like a circle, the center would be h comma k. Well, that doesn't change here because, as I said, think of it as a smushed circle. My center is still going to be h comma k. 
Now, the ellipse has vertices. The circle does not. And since this has the major axis in the x direction, my vertices are going to be in the x direction. As a matter of fact, if I just draw here an ellipse, it's longer in the x direction, my center would be here, my vertices are out here. So here's the deal. What's shifting, so to speak, to get to my vertices is the x-coordinate. And from the center, the distance from the center to each vertice needs to be exactly the same. So, when I look at my vertices, it's the x that's going to be changing. And it's going to be changing by the amount of the radius in the x direction. So, this has uh, a negative a, because I'm going to the left, and this one I'm going to add a to get to the right. So, one of the vertices would be found by doing h minus a, the radius in the x direction. k is not changing. The other one would be found by taking the center and adding a, and the k is not changing, we leave it alone. Good? Does that make sense? Okay. Now remember, the foci are inside, aren't they? So technically, my foci would be right here. My foci would be, like this is fo focus number one and this is focus number two. With me? But again, I'm moving from the center. And it has to be the same amount. So, my foci, I'm going to do H minus C to get to the one on the left. And I'm going to do H plus C to get to the one on the right. Now you're like, where the heck did that C come from? I don't see it in the formula. Right, you don't. This is how you find C. C is equal to the square root of. Now, what is longer, A or B? A is longer. So what's longer, A squared or B squared? A squared. So A squared minus B squared. Because I don't want an imaginary number under there. Are you with me? Clearly, C has got to be smaller than A because it has to be inside, right? Okay, got it. Now let's look at the one where the major axis is vertical. Vertical is the y direction, isn't it? Okay. So again, A and B are the what? The radii. So what would be the radius in the x direction? Yeah, A. What would be the radius in the y direction? Good, B. Now since this one's vertical, which radius is longer? Excellent, the one in the y direction. This one is going to be longer. The center is still HK because I'm talking about a smushed circle. Now the vertices, in this case, this is vertical, isn't it? If this is my center, now my vertices are above and below it, aren't they? Which means, which coordinate's doing the changing? That's right, the K. And you think it's going to be any different than what we did over here? Nope, it's just now I'm dealing with the Y's. So we're going to do K minus to get below. Minus what? Yeah, B, because B is the radius in the Y direction. And the other one, yeah, I need to erase this to get myself the uh, more room to write the other vertice. It's going to be H comma K. Good, you have to add B to get to the one above. Cool? Okay, foci. Which one's doing the changing? The x or the y value? The y value. So h comma k minus to get below, there's the c, and k plus c to get above. Now you're like, where the heck is c coming from? Okay, so c is equal to the square root. Be careful. Be careful. Which one's longer, a or b? b is longer. So which is long, which is which has the higher value, a squared or b squared? Right, b squared. So you're going to do b squared minus a squared. Remember, I don't want an imaginary number under here because I can't do anything with imaginary numbers. So the longer radius minus the shorter radius. Cool? Hang in there. Got some applications for us. Okay, so let's look at the directions. 
They ask us to find all the pertinent information for this conic. So let's look at number one. And when they say the conic, now notice, we've talked about the circle, we've talked about the parabola, and now we've spoken about the ellipse. And the question is, which one of these three does this equation represent? Does it represent a circle? Well, it's got x squared and y squared, right? A circle has an x squared and a y squared, doesn't it? But does a circle have denominators? No. So is it a circle? No. Let's talk about parabola. Does parabola have an x squared and a y squared? No. So it can't be a parabola because this has both x and y squared. So our last choice is an ellipse. Is it an ellipse? Yes x squared and y squared, it has denominators, and it's equal to 1. So all three requirements are met here. Good? So I know I'm dealing with an ellipse. Now, is, this, is the major axis for the ellipse horizontal, or is it vertical? Like, how do you tell again? Well, if you look at this equation, remember what the denominators represent. Yeah, the denominators represent the radii, don't they? And which, one is which one's larger? The one under the x. So in this case, your major axis is horizontal because what is the radius in the x direction? Not 64. Good. 8. I heard you. Because you've got to take the square root of 64, just like the circle. And what's the radius in the y direction? Good. 5 because you had to take the square root, didn't you? Okay, so major axis is horizontal because the radius in the x direction is larger. So now, yeah, now I need to find the center and all that information. So what's the center of our wonderful ellipse here? You're like, I don't see any numbers subtracted from the x or the y. So what would that be? Good, zero. Zero, zero. So be it. Yay! Vertices. Okay, now remember, since the major axis is horizontal, which one of these coordinates is doing the shifting, the moving? Is it the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? Good, it's the x-coordinate that's going to be doing the moving. So, I was going to write x. You could tell, couldn't you? So, to the x-coordinate, to get to the vertex on the left, you are going to, good, subtract. How much? 8, because that's in the x direction. And to get to the 1 to the right, good, you're going to take the x coordinate and add 8. And that one's not changing, for the y, I should say. So we have vertices at negative 8, 0 and positive 8, 0. Excellent. What about the foci? Good. The foci... To find it, yeah, the x is changing again, isn't it? You're like, yeah, but wait a minute. Don't you subtract that c? Mmm, very good. So, c is equal to the square root of what? The larger, which is 64, minus the smaller, which is 25. So, in this case, c is equal to the square root of, yeah, 39. And if they don't want a decimal, you have to leave it as the square root of 39. So, just saying. I know some of you are like, I don't like that. I get it. But, you know, you've got to go with what the authors of the book are asking for. So, we'll minus the square root of 39 to the one of the, uh, for one of the foci. And the other one, you're going to have to add the square root of 39 which means my foci are at negative square root of 39 comma 0, and the other one is at positive 39 comma 0. Cool? And if you graphed it, okay, just do a quick graph. Negative 8, 0, positive 8, 0. My radius in the y direction is 5. And yes, this is not to scale. So when I draw it and the center is 0, 0, it looks something like this. 
Yours probably looks a lot better than mine. By the way, what's the square root of 39? I'm waiting. Get your calculators. Yeah, it's between 5 and 6, isn't it? 5 point something, isn't it? Actually, it's 6 point something because it's between 6 and 7, my fault. So it's 6 point something, right? Well, 6 point something is less than this 8, so your foci should be right about there. So that's what this ellipse would look like. Cool? Okay, let's look at the second one. What is it? Circle, parabola, or an ellipse? Yeah, an ellipse, because it looks just like the first one, doesn't it? Okay, so in this case, your major axis is which direction? Excellent, vertical, why? Because the number under the y's is larger. By the way, is this in standard format? Good, it is. I've got it equal to one, right? And I have x squared over a denominator and y squared over a denominator. Good. So then tell me, what would be the radius in our x direction? 3, because you've got to take the square root. And what's the radius in our y direction? Good. 8. Love it. Okay. Time to find the pertinent information here. What would your center be? Good. 0, 0, because I see nothing added or subtracted to those x and y's. Um, vertices are next on our list. Okay, which one's moving? Which one's doing the changing? The x or the y coordinate? Yeah, the y coordinate's changing because it's a vertical. So to the y, I'm going to subtract 8. By the way, total coincidence, 8 has nothing to do with it being longer than the other, so heads up. And the other one is 0 plus 8 to get to the one above. So here are my vertices. Okay, foci next on my list. Again, which one's doing the changing? The y is doing the changing. So I got to do 0 minus. Uh, yeah, I got to find that c again, don't I? All right. c is equal to the square root of, which one do you write first? The larger one, 64 minus 9. So C is equal to the square root of, good, 55. And you're like, not again. Well, so be it. If that's the case, a non-perfect square, then that's the case. And if they don't ask for a decimal, i got to leave it that way. Gratefully, I'm subtracting from zero, so or adding to zero, so it's not that big of a deal. Right? Okay. So my foci happens to be these two points. And by the way, square root of 55 is between what numbers? Yeah, 7 and 8. So the foci are definitely less than 8, which is a good thing because my foci are supposed to be inside the ellipse. Got it? Good. Hang in there. I've got a couple more examples for us. Okay, so let's look at this next example. They're asking us to find the pertinent information for this conic. And you're like, okay, circle, parabola, or ellipse, which one is it? Well, let's talk about circle. A circle has an x squared and a y squared, doesn't it? This has an x squared and a y squared, so could it be a circle? Yeah, it could, okay. Could it be a parabola? No, because parabolas don't have x and y squared, so not a parabola. Could it be an ellipse? You're like, well, yeah, because x and y are both squared. Exactly. And you're like, well, how do you tell which one this is? Is this a circle or is this an ellipse? Here's how you can tell. Listen, and then pause this video and write it down. And if you need to rewind it so you can hear it again, do that. Any, a circle has how many radii? One. Because it's the same all the way around for a circle, so it has a single radius. Correct? An ellipse has how many radii? Two, because we have a radius in the x direction and we have a radius in the y direction. Correct? Look at the coefficients of x squared and y squared. Are they the same or are they different? They're different. The number in front of x squared is different than the number in front of y squared. 
which tells me I have two radii, which means I'm dealing with an ellipse. Here's why I recommend you pause that and write down what I just said or rewind it so you can listen to it and write it again. This is an ellipse because the coefficients in front of x squared and y squared are different. This is an ellipse, but it's not in standard form. To be in standard form, there can't be any numbers in front of x squared and y squared, and it must be equal to 1. Definitely not equal to 1. It has an 81 at the end. But I need that 81 to be a 1. So how do I turn 81 into 1? Good, I heard you. Divide by 81. Well, if you do that on the right side, you've got to do it on the left side. So both of these are going to get divided by 81, correct? Which means this is going to look like, by the way, can't I reduce the 9 and the 81? Good, I can reduce that to 9. There's no reducing with the y squared. So, here is my ellipse. It was hiding. Cool? Okay, now, can I find the pertinent information? I certainly can. By the way, which one's the major axis, horizontal or vertical? Yeah, the number under the y squared is larger, so this is a vertical ellipse, which means what's your radius in the x direction? Good, 3. What's your radius in the y direction? Good, 9. So what's my center? Ah, 0, 0 again, correct? What are, I'm going to go over here because I'm getting low on the board. What are my vertices? Which one's changing? Yeah, the y is doing the changing. So the x stays the same and the y is going to be 0, good, minus 9. And for the other vertex, it's going to be 0, plus 9. You guys are getting the hang of this. Awesome. And foci. Yep, you're like, wait, I can't find the foci, I need C. Good, so how do I find the C? Square root of the larger one, which is 81, minus 9, the smaller one, which is the square root of, good, 72. Well, that can be broken down. 6 square root of 2. You're like, wait, how'd you get that? Remember, 72 is the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. I can take the square root of 36, but I can't take the square root of 2, so we leave it alone. All right, which means your foci, 0, comma, yeah, it'll be 0 minus this, which is just negative 6 square root of 2, and 0 plus that, which would be positive 6 square root of 2. Cool? So far so good? Hang in there. Got a couple more examples of ellipses, and yeah, they're not going to be in standard form. Okay, so let's look at this fourth example. Again, I have to decide if this is a circle, a parabola, or an ellipse. So, could it be a circle? Yes, because I have an x squared and a y squared. I definitely have a possibility of a circle. Could it be a uh, uh, parabola? No, because parabolas don't have x and y squared, so not a parabola. Could it be an ellipse? Yes, because an ellipse has x squared and y squared. So which one is it, a circle or an ellipse? Do you remember what I said for the last problem? Good, it's an ellipse because the coefficients of x squared and y squared are different which tells me I have two radii here. Now, is it in standard form? Certainly is not. Now, unfortunately, this one's not as simple as the last one. Why? Because I have an x and a y to the power of 1, which tells me I've got more to do than just making it equal to 1. Got any ideas? Yep, I heard some of you. You've got to complete the square, which is why when we talked about the parabolas and I said it's very important for you to know how to complete the square, this is why. Because there's no shortcut for this ellipse. There's no shortcut to put this ellipse in standard form to find its center, like there is a shortcut for the vertex of the parabola. 
you have to know how to complete the square. So let's go. First things first, get that nine to the other side. So as I'm moving the nine to the other side, gratefully, my X's and Y's are all together. If you remember also to complete the square, not, whoops, sorry, not equal to zero. What did we just do? Yeah, we just moved the nine over, so we minus the nine to the other side. If you remember one of the other preparation steps besides getting the non-variables to the other side is making sure our lead coefficients are one. Now typically what we'll do is divide by 16, correct? But not only do the y's get divided by 16, so would the x's, and so clearly would the other side. So if I divide this by 16, now I've got a number in front of the x squared, and I don't want one there. So instead of dividing, I am still going to divide, but I'm going to use another process that doesn't technically get rid of the 16, but it removes it from in front of the y squared. And you know this process. Yeah, I think some of you said it. It's called factoring. So I'm going to factor out that 16 instead. Sorry, just lost my train of thought. So I have to factor out from both the y's. Cool? So the non-variables are on the other side. The lead coefficients of x squared and y squared are both 1. Am I now ready to complete the square? Yes, I am. Okay, now I'm completing the square. The first two steps we were preparation steps. We were preparing this equation so it could be in the right format for us to complete the square. And how many times am I going to complete the square? Twice. Once for the x's and once for the y's. So for the x's. Yeah, I take the coefficient of x, which is a positive 6. We take half of it, and then we square it. What do you get? Yeah, you'll get a positive 9. So that means I'm going to add 9 to, this, to these x's. But you don't just add it to one side. You add it to the other side. Okay, let's look at the y's. So I'm going to take half of negative 6 and square it, which will still give us a positive 9. So I'm going to add 9 to the y's. And over here, is it really just 9 I'm adding? Think about it. You added 9 inside this parenthesis, didn't you? What is this parenthesis being affected by? It's being affected by the 16 out here. So the 16 would get redistributed. You'd have 16y squared you'd have minus 96y, and now, yeah, 9 times 16, that's a 144. You actually added 144 to the left side, which means you have to add the exact same number to the right side. You did just add 9. The 9 had to be multiplied by the 16. Does that make sense? Okay, now, remember, the whole point of completing the square is so I can factor, to make factoring easier for us. So check it out. The x's will factor very nicely. The y's also actually factor very nicely. And over here on this side, the right side, the 9's drop out. And 9 times 16, yep, 144. Well, it's looking more like an ellipse all the time, isn't it? But is it in standard form? No, it's not. You've got to get rid of that 144 because an ellipse is equal to 1, isn't it? So how do I do it? Yeah, you're going to have to divide the 144 by 144. But if you do it to the right side, yep, you've got to do it to the left side. And when you do this, you end up with the quantity of x plus 3 squared over 144 plus, do the 16 and the 144 reduce? They do. The quantity of y minus 3 squared over 9 equaling 1. Cool? Okay. So, 
I think our lives are going to be a little bit nicer now. Because that is definitely an ellipse. And what's my major axis? The major axis is horizontal here. Because I have the larger number under the x's. Which means the radius in the x direction is what? Good, it's 12. What's the radius in the y direction? Good, 3. Now, in this case, what's your center? Yeah, your center is a negative 3, because remember, you set these equal to 0, just like we did for the circle. So the x-coordinate's a negative 3, and the y-coordinate is a positive 3. To find the vertices, which coordinate's getting affected, the x or the y? Well, since the major axis is horizontal, the x is getting affected. So the negative 3 is getting affected. And to get to the vertex on the left, you're going to subtract. How much are you going to subtract? Good, 12, because that's the radius in the x direction. And to get to the other vertex, you're going to add 12, which means my vertices are negative 15, comma 3, and positive 9, comma 3. Excellent. So what about my foci? Some of you are like, don't you need that C thing? Yeah, I need that C thing. Boy, I'm hoping C comes out nicer in this one than it did the last two. Okay, so C is equal to the square root of, good, 144 minus 9. I don't think this is going to come out any nicer. So what is that? The square root of 135? Yeah, that certainly didn't come out any nicer, did it? Okay, so let's see. Does that reduce at all? Does, can, we, can we reduce this? Let me see something real quick. Actually, it does. See, I already did my work. It actually turns out to be 3 square root of 15. And yes, these foci are not going to look very nice. I get it. And if they don't want a decimal, you have to leave it this way. So, which coordinate's getting affected? The x, because it's horizontal. So my negative 3, I'm going to subtract that c value. And I'm going to add that c value. And if they want a decimal, I'll give them a decimal. But that's, those are my foci. Cool? Excellent. Hang in there. Got one more for you. Okay, so let's look at this example. I'm going to wait a moment and you're going to tell me if this is a circle, a parabola, or an ellipse. Got the song stuck in your head yet? Okay, which one is it? Excellent. An ellipse. Why? Because x and y are both squared, but the coefficients are different, which implies two radii. Okay, is it in standard form? <laughs> Much to your chagrin, it's not, because you're like, that looked like the last problem where we had to complete the square. So what do you think you're going to have to do with this problem? Complete the square. What's the first thing you're going to do? Yeah, move the 239 over, and while you're moving the 239 over, I'm highly going to suggest that you also collect your x's and y's together. So my x's are written next to each other, and my y's are written next to each other. Okay, so the non-variable is on the other side. Now what? Yeah, your lead coefficients have to be a 1, are they? Nope, so what are we going to do? Can I divide them out? No, because they're not the same, which means I'm going to end up with fractions in front of my x and y squared. Good, so we are going to divide, but we're going to use the factoring to divide, not the literal division problem. So we're going to factor out this 36 from the x's. So, and from the y's, we're going to factor out this 25. And, okay, so now, am I now ready to complete the square? Yeah. The non-variables on the other side and the coefficients in front of the x squared and y squared are technically 1's. The, other, the 36 and the 25 are outside parentheses, which means these are technically 1's. 
So time to complete the square. Okay, so for my x's, we take the negative 2, we take half of it, and we square it, don't we? Yep, plus 1. So I added a plus 1 inside the parentheses. So what are you going to add to this 239? Good, 1 times the 36. Now, for the y's. I take the positive 10, half of it, and square it. What do you get? Good, 25. So to this side, do I add just 25? Nope, I add 25 times 25. Well, isn't that lovely? Okay, so take a look at the next line. The whole reason we complete the square is to factor the parentheses. So it's a perfect uh, trinomial. So when you factor it, you get something times itself. That's the whole job, remember, of completing the square. And the same thing on the y's. Now this is a perfect trinomial. So when I factor it, I get something times itself. Equals, did you figure this addition out yet? I got 900. Hopefully you got that too. Okay, looking more like an ellipse, but is it? Correct, it's not, because i got to get rid of this 900, and how are you going to do it? Good, you divide both sides by 900. When I divide both sides by 900, this was my result. So hopefully your result will match my result. x minus 1, quantity squared over 25, because I had to reduce the 36 with the 900. And over here, I got the quantity of y plus 5 squared over 36 equaling 1. Hopefully, we agree on that. Cool? Okay. So, definitely an ellipse now, yes? Major axis is good, vertical, because the number under the y's is larger. What's the radius in your x direction, please? 5. What's the radius in the y direction? 6. Okay, time to find all that pertinent information then. So, center. What you guys get? Yeah, positive 1, negative 5. Vertices. Which one's moving? Yeah, since it's vertical, the y's are going to be doing the changing. So negative 5 minus 6 and negative 5 plus 6, which means my vertices are 1 comma negative 11 and 1 comma 1. Excellent. Both side. You need that C, don't you? Okay, I've got room over here. C is equal to the square root of 36 minus 25. Good. The larger one minus the smaller one. And again, it's not perfect. Well, say la vie. That's the way it works. So, and if they don't ask for a decimal, i got to leave it this way. So to the y value, I'm going to subtract the square root of 11. And to the y value, I'm going to add the square root of 11. I can plot all these points, connect the dots, find my ellipse if they ask me to do so. Cool? Okay, so in these first five problems, we found the pertinent information. Now, the next few problems, they're going to give us the information, and they're going to say, find the ellipse. I'll be right back, so stay tuned.